Hello and welcome to Living Life. Uh, may you be deeply enriched in your time in God's Word today. Today is May 27th and we are on Numbers uh, chapter 7. Uh, I, have you ever thought about Christian life and ministry and go, man, it's really tiring and burdensome and just want to take a break and uh, you thought, man, why do all these people give so much of their time and uh, their resources uh, to really these ministries? You know, I hear that a lot from uh, some of our church uh, people who give so much uh, of their time and resources and abilities and you invest so much and they have all these difficult relationships, people who don't really change and they come and say, I just want to take a break. It seems like a waste of my time. So what do you do when you're tired like that? When you, what do you do when you hit a spiritual fatigue or uh, you're discouraged from giving and giving and giving in your life? How do you overcome these spiritual um, fatigue and uh, tiredness uh, in your life. So let's go to our passage for some answer today. Numbers chapter 7 verses 84 through 89. These were the offerings of the Israelite leaders for the dedication of the altar when it was anointed. 12 silver plates, 12 silver sprinkling bowls, and 12 gold dishes. Each silver plate weighed 130 shekels, and each sprinkling bowl 70 shekels. Altogether, the silver dishes weighed 2,400 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The 12 gold dishes filled with incense weighed 10 shekels each, according to the sanctuary shekel. Altogether, the gold dishes weighed 120 shekels. The total number of animals for the burnt offering came to 12 young bulls, 12 rams and 12 male lambs a year old, together with their grain offering. 12 male goats were used for the sin offering. The total number of animals for the sacrifice of the fellowship offering came to 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 male lambs a year old. These were the offerings for the dedication of the altar after it was anointed. When Moses entered the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim above the atonement cover on the Ark of the Testimony and he spoke with him. In our passage today, we see a summation or total uh, count of all the offerings that Israelites uh, brought tribe by tribe for 12 tribes. Uh, for the previous 83 verses, uh, you know, uh, tribe by tribe, they've been bringing these offerings and it's a meticulously detailed account of their offerings and dedication uh, to the tabernacle. So what is the point of all these details? The point is that God cares about every detail of our lives offered up to Him. We can't just generally, oh, I offered this portion of my life to God, or, or I gave my life to God. We can't generally say that. God cares about every detail and portion and aspect of our lives devoted unto Him. And if you look at these sum in our verses, it's pretty extravagant. 12, sir, 12 silver plates, 12 uh, sprinkling bowls, gold dishes, and there's lots and lots and lots of animals given up for burnt offering. Burnt offering in the Old Testament always refers to a whole surrender. You know, these precious commodity like animals burnt up 100% without any remaining. Uh, it's a sign of complete wholehearted surrender unto the Lord. It's a complete surrender. So why all this offering? Why all this giving? Why all these animals and precious metals dedicated to God? Isn't it a, a waste in some, some ways? But in verse 89, the very last, third, last verse of our passage, there's a beautiful picture of who God is. Look at verse 89. It says, When the Moses entered the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim above the, above the atonement cover on the Ark of the Covenant Law. In this way, the Lord spoke to him. The atonement cover, that, that word, uh, it's Hebrew word is kaphrath, a covering. In other versions of the Bible, it says mercy seat. Uh, that is absolutely the hot spot of God's glory. That's the throne of God on the earth. That's where God spoke to Moses and revealed himself fully uh, to his people. 
you know, that's so important for us to see that God doesn't reveal himself as a wrathful, angry judge, but uh, he reveals himself as mercy seat, merciful king who covers the sins of his people. And his throne on the earth is called not a judgment seat, but his throne on the, on the earth is called mercy seat. And this is really amazing because we see that same Hebrew word, kephret, appear again uh, when the same word is used for pr propitiation or atoning sacrifice. In the New Testament, when it refers to Jesus and how his sacrifice on the cross turns away the wrath of God uh, from the sinners. So where is the mercy seat? Where is the uh, throne of God here on the earth? Where does God fully reveals him, reveal himself to his people? Where can you go to see, really see God for who he is? And the answer to that is the cross. The cross is the mercy seat of God, the atonement cover where God covers the sins of his people. That's why in view of this, Paul says in Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your prop true and proper worship. I love that word, true and proper. It literally means logical, logical response. When you have a clear understanding of all that God has done for you, when you have a clear view of God's mercy for your life, the only logical response is to give your whole life as a living sacrifice. If someone paid off your phone bill, about $100, you would say, oh gee, thank you so much, uh, brother, or thank you so much, friend. I owe you one, buddy. So it would be kind of a tap on the shoulder, or really, you would truly be grateful, uh, but you would owe him like a dinner or something. But if someone paid off a house loan or a med school bill, a school loan of $100,000 or even more. You know, the only logical response is to fall at his feet and say, I owe you everything. You've given me so much. You've given up so much for me, so I owe you everything. That's why in Matthew 26, there's a beautiful story of this woman who brings an alabaster jar of perfume, just breaks it. It's a very precious perfume breaks it, pours it, dumps it all out at Jesus' feet and washes the feet of Jesus with her hair. And people are saying, that's such a waste. Why is she doing that? And Jesus says, leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing to me. Wherever the gospel is preached, her story will be told. Why? Because that is the only logical, true and proper worship or logical response. Once you see how much Jesus has done for you, you will pour out your life onto Him. So what we need today is to go back to our central motivation. What is our central motivation as a Christian is that, that word, in view of God's mercy. In view of God's mercy. God's abundant mercy alone uh, for the undeserving sinner alone is sufficient motivation for us to get off our spiritual fatigue and to be moved in our hearts and to love Him and pour out our lives unto Him again. So how do you overcome discouragement in ministry? How do you overcome spiritual fatigue? You need a right view of God's mercy. God says, look at the atonement cover. Look at the mercy seat and be moved to give your life to me once again. I have a brother at our church who gave away a significant portion of his income. It was so large uh, that, you know, it was literally shocking how much he gave uh, for the sake of another person, of his money. And as he gave away, uh, he gave me this explanation. You know, it really hurts me. I, I love money. I love enjoying good things in life. It hurts me to give away uh, this portion, this much portion of money. Uh, but it reminds me of how much it hurt even a glimpse of how much it hurt God to give away Jesus uh, for me. So it makes him understand God's love for him even in a deeper way. And that's why he's able to separate from his, from his money and give away a significant portion. How about us? Our love for us, our love for God should be extravagant because God's love for us 
is truly extravagant. So let me pray for you today that we will be enthralled and moved in our hearts by his extravagant love for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your extravagant love and your mercy to us. Give us a right view of your mercy so that we will give our lives to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. <목소리>